Relative pronoun asher. In this module, we'll look at the word asher. Now, asher is, is very common. You'll see it everywhere. And it is most commonly used as a relative uh, pronoun. It is used to introduce a relative clause, which is something that then modifies a noun or a noun phrase. So you have uh, you have a noun or something like that, or a noun phrase, and you say who, something else, the man who was walking the dog. Okay, so this whole thing is introducing, is modifying that the asher, which will be right here at the beginning of it, will introduce the whole clause and link it. That's what relative pronouns do. Now, back w before we talked about uh, independent personal pronouns, I think it was, I talked about pronouns in general. And I mentioned five categories. I said we have personal, demonstrative, interrogative, indefinite, and relative pronouns. So here we're dealing with the relative uh, category, just in case you've forgotten. And uh, this asher, just to write it out nice and big here, so it has the chataf patach there, a asher. Asher is always just asher. It's not marked for gender or person or number or case or anything like that. So regardless of what it modifies, if this is a subject, this is an object, this is feminine, masculine, singular, whatever, it's always the same, same form. Now it's not like that in other languages, so it's a bit different that way. So you don't have to worry about memorizing any forms. That's the good part. The good part about asher, it's always the same form. Okay, here's an example. Hanavi asher bahechal. Okay. Navi is priest. Uh, prophet, sorry. Navi is prophet. Uh, Kohen is priest. The prophet, asher, our relative pronoun, Bahechal, uh, this is temple, could be palace, but in this context, well, actually, it could be either palace or temple. With prophets, you don't know. With priests, you would probably say it's with a temple. It, obviously, it would be context that would tell you, but let's just say uh, palace. So the prophet who is in the palace or who is in the temple. This is our alter pronoun here. It's not marked for gender or anything like that, right? It's just asher. And it modifies, well, first of all, it introduces this whole piece here. This is our relative phrase. This introduces the whole thing. And it links it, or it modifies, uh, profit. So profit is our antecedent. Um, I suppose I should spell it out. A N T E. C E D E N T. Not very good writing, is it? Antecedent. So this is pointing to its antecedent, much like pronouns point to an antecedent. Now, if we have uh, an attributive adjective, they also can function as a relative clause, and they don't need asher. So if you have a sentence like this, Hamelech. Hayashar. Yashar means upright. Melech, of course, is king. Uh, this could this, you could translate this as the upright king, or you could say the king. Oops. The king who is upright. The point is that a, a relative or a, a attributive adjective functions like a relative clause and doesn't need an asher. So you don't need to put asher in here and say Hamelech asher Hayashar. You just say Hamelech. Hayashar. In this previous example, we needed asher here because bahechal, which is a prepositional phrase, I suppose, although in Hebrew it's they're all one word. Um, it this this here is not a attributive adjective, and so it does need asher. But recognize that attributive adjectives function much like relative pronouns. So asher. Relative pronoun, uh, no markings for anything, introduces a relative clause.